Amazingly, <laughs> one of these blocks is only supposed to be a centimetre. <laughs> 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 Welcome to the GCN Show. You can win this, a signed Alberto Contador, Giro d'Italia, Malia Rosa. Also coming up, we've got Bradley Wiggins feeling the atmospheric pressure, but still smashing the World Hour record. Yeah, we wrap up the Cotillion de Dauphiné and the Philadelphia International Cycle Classic, plus we've got a really stealth tech of the week. Bradley Wiggins has smashed the hour record, posting 54.526 kilometres. And once again, Matt has absolutely nailed his prediction. Yeah, I reckon around 54 and a half. Nice one, Matt. Cheers. Yeah. Now, the distance, although very impressive, actually wasn't quite as far as many, including Wiggins himself, had predicted that he would ride on the evening. And apparently, that's all down to atmospheric pressure. So, well done, Matt, for forecasting that pressure over a month ago and then factoring that into your prediction of distance. You know, it just seems like a few weeks ago that no one really knew about the effects that atmospheric pressure could have on the distance and speed. But now, of course, we are all experts. Yeah, well, just in case you missed it, though, Wiggins' ride actually coincided with a very high-pressure weather system, which potentially meant that he lost 900 metres of a similarly low extreme pressure weather system. And it simply made it harder to cut through the air. Mm. We shouldn't let that detract, though, from the brilliance of his ride. Aerodynamic guru Xavier Disley has predicted that Wiggins did about 440 watts for the hour, and given the demands of riding on the track, that's pretty awesome. And I mean that in the true sense of the word. Mm. The first of the traditional warm-up races for the Tour de France started on Sunday, the eight-day Criterium de Dauphiné. Stage one finished around a number of fairly challenging circuits, and the breakaway went clear in the closing kilometres, and from that breakaway, Pete Kenyuk emerged solo, taking his first ever World Tour victory by a few seconds from the bunch behind. Yeah, and stage two was a bunch sprint, and that was taken by fast man Nasser Arni of Kofidis, and he's edged out Sam de Moulon of AG2R and Sasha Modolo of Lampremarie in third. And a pretty timely win for the Frenchman ahead of the Tour as well. Mm. It's a savage looking parkour this year, Dauphin, isn't it? Alex Dowsett of Mostar posted uh, this quite amusing tweet saying, uh, race books arrived for the Dauphin 8. Lots of swear words from Rory Sutherland and myself. Sorry, Mum, whilst looking at the profiles. It is very, very, very pointy. I wonder what they said. Like, flipping heck. Or call, like, call blimey. Blimey, mm. governor. Well, yeah, Rory Sutherland would have said it in Australian twang, wouldn't he? Like, Go on then. Right. Uh, Struth. Oh, crikey, Struth. mate. Struth, Alex, you seen this profile, mate? Caption of the week. Now, last week we showed you a picture of Luca Paolini, a blini, and some caviar. And the winner is Gixa 750 Pilot, who said, GCN asked whether or not cycle racing is too expensive. Clearly not. Nice one. Yeah, that was a great caption. Um, we will award you the victory because uh, you've been slightly quieter of late about my uh, shoe and sock combination. So anyway, get in touch and we will send you a GCN t-shirt. This week's caption competition photo is Peter Keniak winning the recent stage of the Dauphiné. Dan, do you want to get us started? Yeah. Oh my word, I didn't know this happened when I got this excited. My word. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, you can send us your entries in the usual way and if you're new to the channel, that is by leaving your suggestions in the comment section which are below this video. Good luck. Picture of Luca Paolini with a little blini and some Luca Paolini and a little bit of blini. <laughs> just pull it down again and just gonna hold my breath for the whole of this shit. Go. Do you want to win an authentic Malia Rosa signed by none other than Alberto Contador and worn by none other than Matt Stevens. Of course you blooming well do. And to enter it, you first got to head over to our Facebook page. You can find a link to that in the description just below this video. Yeah, all you have to do to try and win this jersey is answer one simple question, and that question is, how many stages did Alberto Contador win in this year's Giro? Oh, is it five or six? Damn. <laughs> anyway, you've got to be quick because the competition ends on the 15th of June at 10 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So, get on it. Get your skates on. Yeah, what, what are you waiting for? Tech. Oh, no, 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 I'm not really. Sorry. 
Tech of the week this week is a very stealthy spy shot. How cool is this? Veloveca tweeted us at GCN Tweet with a photo of a Trek factory racing team bike that he saw at the top of the Col de la Coiffeur. Mm, yeah, the eagle-eyed reverend noticed, as you too will also no doubt, that this looks like an all-new aero road frame. And in fact, it looks like they've got a new one-piece bar stem combo as well, which looks particularly aerodynamic. And as well, I couldn't help but notice that the rear brakes have moved from the chain stays back up to the seat stays as well. So maybe this is Trek plugging the gap in their range. They've now got the super light Amanda, they've got the super comfy Domani, and this, the super aero Madon. Well, I've been speculating about this because they're all anagrams of each other, as you all very well know. So maybe this very fast bike is going to be called a demon. As in like My the word. speed demon. I'm you, riding a demon. You might have actually heard it here first, actually, in reality. I hope so, I hope I'm right. You copyrighted it, okay? I have, yeah. yeah. They're gonna have, track, you I'm in for a, for a big, big payday, if that's right. Roman Kreuziger of Tinkoff Saxo has been racing under somewhat of a cloud over the last 11 months. In June of 2014, the UCI made public what it saw as suspicious blood values in his biological passport related to 2011 and 2012, and at that time, he was racing for Team Astana. Yeah, however, last week, the UCI WADA and the Court of Arbitration for Sport dropped their case against the Czech rider, stating that new information and new evidence had come to light. Now, Kreuzig himself has stated his innocence throughout and remained steadfast, even taking a lie detector test. We understand that Kreuzinger himself won't be seeking damages against the UCI, but it remains to be seen whether or not his team Tinkoff Saxo will, because they did, after all, spend quite a chunk of 2014 without one of their highest paid riders. So that'll be an interesting development. For the first time in 14 years, the Philadelphia International Championship was a stop on the UCI Women's World Cup, now finishing atop the fearsome Maniunk Wall. Capping off an incredible weekend for British riders, it was Lizzie Armistead of Bowles Dolmans taking the win ahead of Elisa Longo Borghini of Wiggle Honda with Elena Amia Luciak of Velocio Sram taking third. Comment of the week now, this one from Hannah Playford really caught our attention, particularly Dan in fact. It was pretty much you that put this in the script, wasn't mm. it? Uh, Dan Lloyd, by far the best Grand Tour rider ever. 161st in the 2010 Tour de France, 109th in the 2009 Giro. This stuff's hard to beat. Didn't, yeah. you, get, didn't you get moved up from 161st? I probably might positive. be 158th or so now, I think. But importantly, she also missed out one of my Giri d'Italia results on there, so I'll be even further up the, uh, the list of all-time honours. Well, you, you're not far up the list. You are the top. She said you're the best. Well, I'd, be, I'm even, I'd have a bigger gap. I'd have daylight between myself, Contador and Merckx, etc. No arguing with that. Uh, anyway, I thought this one might catch your attention, Sai, because it's all about WD-40. It came Ooh. in from Gerald Conkle. He said, WD-40 can be used for anything, just as you said, Sai. I swear that I use it to clean my stove, clean and lube my bike, clean my hands, clean my guns, and even used it as a deodorant. I used to use it as a flamethrower when I was a kid. Did you? <laughs> but don't do that at home. Oh, the things you could do in the 70s. <laughs> on the channel this week, on Wednesday, how to train for cycling, a beginner's guide. On Thursday, it's our top 10 riders to look out for at the Tour de Suisse. Yeah, and on Friday, we give you our last minute get out of jail free tips for sportifs. And on Saturday, we take a close look at Rui Costa's Merida Reacto team bike. Sunday is our usual off the back. Monday is how to set up your bike like a pro, which might surprise you, doesn't recommend that you should slam that stem. So you better check it out, find mm. out what we do think. And on Tuesday, it's the moment that even we wait for every single week. It's the GCN show. Back on the sofa. Time for Tweet of the Week now, a little added bonus for you later on. First up, it's Louis Viveka of Lotto Sudal. He put first night on altitude in Udenada, perfect training location for some altitude training. Hashtag Coppenberg Hill, hashtag 2300 meters. Instagram of the week. Cool, so this week, Instagram of the week is from Cal Crutchlow. Now, for those of you that don't know, he is a, one of the top MotoGP riders. Here he is, taking a selfie, motor pacing Mark Cavendish. Which is kind of cool, and no wonder Cav looks yeah. pretty puffed out because Cal Crutch is one of the fastest motorbike riders in the world. So he's swift. His form must be coming on well for the Tour de France. He's, he's panting, well. Cav, there, isn't he? And he's doing a selfie at the same time as well. Hashtag yeah. safety. Okay. Swing corner. Swing corner. Swing corner. <laughs> <laughs> this week's extreme corner. Extreme corner. Extreme corner. Comes from Fort William Mountain Bike Downhill World Cup. Manon Carpenter finished fourth with one shoe. Here's how she lost the other one. 
Oh, oh my word. Look at that shoe. Got to her. Oh. She finished fourth. She's never getting that back. That's, that's unbelievable. That's resilience. Oh. Well, on that right note, there. it's the end of the GCN show. Yeah, if you want a more detailed look into Bradley Wiggins, our record from a couple of days ago, you can find that by clicking up there. And if you want to look at some of the latest time trial tech, which is brought to you by Cy Richardson under skies that were raining very heavily <laughs> without an umbrella, you can click down there and find that. And to subscribe to GCN, you know you want to. Click on Alberto Contador's signature right here. Just there. Oh. He actually wrote it with his hand. That is enticing. Him. That really is, is enticing. Oh, oh, thumbs up, thumbs up. We haven't done the you like doing that, sir. Or do you want me to do it this week? You do it this week. Uh, if you you know if you like this video, you can kind of let us know that you liked it because just below here there's like um there's well there's a thumbs down, but ignore that one. There's a thumbs up. And if you click that, we'd just be really happy, wouldn't we? It's definitely well. less enticing than clicking on a pink jersey. I'm not gonna lie down. I'm saying to, to win it. <laughs> Oof. Oh, I dribbled a bit. <laughs> just dribbled a bit. <laughs> that nice. I wonder what it's filled with. Is it like horse hair or something? Or it's got memory foam? I think sponge. Sponge. It's, it's horse hair or memory foam. That's what <laughs> <you're doing. laughs>